Howdy, howdy, guys and gals. Today, we're going to be covering War Main seasonal server Frostmourne. That's about to enter its third season. But before we continue, I'd like to say if you liked the video, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to be notified when I put out more content. First of all, if you're not familiar with War Main seasonal server Frostmourne, it's in my opinion one of the best Wrath of Lich King era servers, all controversies and pay to win options aside. I've been playing on and off on this server back when the devs were still being conned during the Molten WoW era, which is a story and a video all in its own right for another time. In early 2020, at the start of the pandemic and what now seems like a simpler time before things started getting, um, well, a little dark, back in April, when most people were like at home waiting to hear whether or not the government was going to be giving them 1200 buck of ruse, or they were in the stores fighting for toilet paper, we were blessed with an announcement from these Eastern European angels that we we're going to be getting an annually resetting seasonal server that would start at the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King with Nexoramas and the progress all the way up to Ice Crown. With all the balancing of 3.3.5 and the fixes that were made by the team over the years at Warmain to balance out play even more, the server would feature two raid resets per week and three month content drops. I was pretty excited about it. And at the time I was playing on a TPC server over on the Endless WoW servers when I got the glorious news. On launch, I went pretty hard on the server, leveling my paladin tank and became the main tank of a guild. And a few weeks in, sadly, I realized, dang, doing Nax twice a week is boring. And let's just say I slowly lost interest in the project. Well, flash forward to 2021 and the server is about to reset. And I convinced a group of my Final Fantasy friends to give the server a try for season two. I mean, come on, time walking of TBC raids to catch up. No more double raid resets. So... I decided I was going to lead my own guild and I created the group called Apes Together Strong and as their fearless leader I hated raid leading and guild leading. Finding players was awful, finding quality players even worse and getting pugs was terrible. So one night in the middle of a raid it's just it was just going so bad on Grobulus that I convinced the other officers and the people that I wanted to come with me that were of quality to the alliance side and we created the Karazhan chess team that night and unintentionally we were pretty good but again over time i lost interest in the project and other games came out and i just went on to do other things in my life but over the last year i've been doing some reflecting and my mindset shifted a lot of what defines fun for me and how i make fun in mmos so this season i'm planning on playing for the full season and i plan on playing as a dps and not a main tank because i think that's what burns me out too but i also convinced the guild that i abandoned like a red-headed stepchild to take me back as a raider and i'm going to be starting out as a trial so that's going to be interesting but that ends my backstory over here on frostmorn let's go over to some of the changes that are coming for season three at reset everyone will start off at level one with nothing from last season that hasn't changed this season and it won't change probably going forward we will all have to work our way back up to level 80 there are no boosts on this server looking at you synergy project giving everybody an easy option the first raid tier will not open until two weeks after the server has been live. And every three months, we'll be getting new raid tiers, with the exception of Trolley Crusader, which is only one month, which is not bad. Trolley Crusader is a pretty fast raid tier. There are rewards for getting certain achievements at the end of the season, such as the Lore Master achievement and a couple others. The server, unfortunately, does have a cash shop, and the items you can buy are in game weapons and current tier items. The only upside about the cash shop is that the raid has to be cleared and the items have to have dropped a certain amount of times before they can appear in the cash shop, which kind of limits the amount of pay to win players to an extent, but not that much. At the end of the season, all your characters get transferred off the server onto Ice Crown, which is Warmain's most popular server. Leveling on the server is pretty fast, as like Ice Crown, it features a 7x XP rate. If you feel like it, if that's too fast for you, you can adjust the XP rate to a lower rate and just by clicking right on your XP bar, then selecting rates from 0.5, 1, 3, and 5. As mentioned earlier, getting gear on the server is pretty quick as you not only have the core raids, but this season again will have time walking for each tier and it's going to be a good catch up mechanic. I took too long making the script for this video that the season 3 announcement was made and the server is going to be resetting on april 15th and boy this season is going to be interesting a little different than what warmain has done in the past it's got some custom stuff 
let's break down some of the changes that are happening this season. First of all, this season the server will be set to what's called peace mode, which basically just means it's a PvE server with the ability to turn on PvP mode for those who want to do open world PvP. I feel like this change doesn't really matter that much. Open world PvP only matters in the first few weeks while people are leveling and grinding out mats for raiding. Other than that, open world PvP dies pretty quick. This also could shake up the race to server first 80, as leveling from 60 to 80 is significantly faster to do with quests and even way faster when you don't have anybody to kill you. I'm curious to see how fast people level to 80 this time around. Time walking will work mostly the same this season as it did last season. You'll just need to set your raid difficulty to 10 man heroic or 25 man heroic to go into the time walking versions of the raids you're trying to do. To better explain, basically if Zulaman is the time walking raid you're trying to do, you just set your raid difficulty to 10 man heroic, walk in, get your gear, get out. Same with Tempest Keep. Let's say Tempest Keep is the raid you're trying to do, you set your raid difficulty to 25 man heroic and just repeat. These raids will reward 10 man level gear from the current raid tier that it's tied to. So basically, you'll be getting either Nax, Ulduar, TOC, or ICC 10 gear out of it. The rotation for this season has changed, and the rotation will be as follows. Phase 1, Tempest Keep. Phase 2, Gruul's Lair and Serpent Shrine Cavern. Phase 3, Zulaman and Magtheridon's Lair. Phase 4, Black Temple. In my opinion, Black Temple was not well received last season just because of the tuning. So we'll see how it's tuned this season and maybe has a little bit more popularity. The next new feature added to the server for Season 3 is open world content. This is a new feature that they've added that we have yet to see before on any of the servers. This will hopefully breed some life into the open world, which is what they said the goal was for the system. Most people, once they hit 80, hang out and dollar around for the remainder of the season, which kind of sucks, but whatever. The way open world content has been explained is you will receive bonuses for completing bonus objectives in certain zones, such as specific quests or killing a group of monsters. The system sounds a lot like World Quest from current Retail WoW, which I really don't mind and gives the player something to do. I'm very curious to see what the rewards of the system will be. Maybe bonus loot for some sort to get you dungeon ready at 80, or even gear so you're not running around in whites at level 70. We'll just have to wait and see what the system is. The last new feature for this season is Mythic Dungeons. This feature has been the most interesting and controversial one added to any season of Frostmourne, and it's really stirred the pot up on the forums. We have a basic idea of how it's going to be implemented. What we know so far is that the first Mythic Dungeon will be announced once the first person hits level 80. There will be only one Mythic Dungeon available, but the dungeon will change on a weekly rotation. The rewards for Mythic aren't clear, but they said better than heroic raid rewards, whatever that means. I feel like it'll be some kind of 10-man raid gear, but we'll just have to play the game and find out. All in all these changes, I find them welcomed and needed. These changes I think are going to make Wrath Lich King feel fresh and like a different game, as a seasonal server should be. I'll be streaming the launch on the 15th and more than likely be doing a 24-hour stream as I race to level 80 and get ready to raid for the season. You can catch the stream over on twitch.tv forward slash nixiusgg. Leave a comment down below if you're planning on playing Warmain for the season or what you think about these changes. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know what you think. And until next time, guys and gals, peace.